Hey there! Okay, so, this is what happened. I posted a picture of my new lovely uh, knife bag on Instagram and I asked people if they were interested in seeing how I have set this up. I'm about to move across country for work, so I, I got a new knife bag. I had another one by Kai Shun that was pretty bulky. I saw this and I, I got one. So. When I say knife bag, I'm talking about kitchen knives, okay? So there's not going to be pens, there's not going to be pocket knives, it's just kitchen knives. And I'll show off how I set this up, and I, I have a, a pretty nice bond with most of my knives. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about every knife that's in here. Uh, some knives I'm, I'm leaving here, just for... I, I will be back at some point, um, uh, most likely. So uh, they are safe here. But this is what I use on a daily basis. So, if you're not interested in kitchen knives, this video will have nothing for you. That's just the way it is. As to the bag. The bag is made by Baldrick. Uh, it's a US-based company, as I understand. And I, I have to give a shout-out to Nella Cucina in um, uh, Toronto here. A very nice kitchen shop. They special ordered this specific model for me. I, I explained that I needed it within a certain time frame because I'm moving. They arranged that everything was done. They even delivered it uh, for free to my doorstep which I think is, is very lovely, uh, lovely service. So that's, that's very, very nice. Okay, so as to the bag, it holds 17 knives. It's uh, uh, buffalo leather, uh, so it's it's very soft. It's, it's very nice, it's very pleasant, and I just love the, the, the classic look of it. Also, for those of you who actually travel with the bags, uh, it's all leather, it's, it's rugged, brass buckles. I just love this look. It's such a classic, old-fashioned look. Okay, so let's open this up. I have to see how this turns out in the camera or on camera as to the angle. You have to undo these buckles and of course I'm actually sitting on the floor so this is not very easy right now. But as I've said before, my, my videos are always what you see is what you get. They're not really edited. So there we go. Okay. So let's start here, I'll adjust this a little bit, uh, right there, on the outside, these are actually pen loops, but I thought, you know what, I never use a pen, so I'll just use, uh, I'll use them for some smaller knives. Let's take these out, I'll just take them out and I'll show you. So what do we have here? Yes, these are very professional knife guards, I know I should have some sort of edge guard, I should probably buy one. But anyway, what do we have? The first one here. It's my, my pairing knife, trusty pairing knife. I absolutely love this knife. It's, it's a global. Uh, it's a small one if you want to know the um, uh, number. It's the GS38. So it's, it's a smaller global knife, pairing knife. It's a really thick handle, um, which is interesting, but very comfortable for, for reverse cuts if you're, you're peeling something. I found this to be an overall lovely uh, knife. If I remember correctly, it's three and a half inch blade. Um, then we have this. Uh, this is a, uh, a Kaishun, um, <coughs> pardon me, pairing knife. Sometimes I want to have a pairing knife that has a, uh, a sheep's foot edge, so not something pointy like the other one, but a flat uh, edge that can be useful because you have more contact with the product. So sometimes I, I, I prefer this. Um, this is actually a Williams Sonoma exclusive, so you, you can only get this Williams Sonoma in a set with this knife, also a Shun. This is a lovely knife. Uh, it's, a, it's a scallop edge, a smaller blade as well, um, and I just love this one for all kinds of uh, tasks. This cuts bread very well, tomatoes, anything that is, or, or bell peppers that, that, that has a slightly harder skin, very easily get uh, go through with this. And if you're making a sandwich, you can cut your bread and use it as a, a knife to uh, smear, as it were. <clears throat> so you can spread stuff uh, on your um, on your bread, and then finally I have another global. This is, if I remember correctly, this is one of whoops. This is one of the uh, forged uh, globals. Let me just check that. Yes, the GSF 17. So the F stands for forge. They're a little heavier, and um, has a lot of weight near the handle, and it's a, a bird's bill. So it it has this this curvature. Uh, the advantage of this is uh, uh, it's a turning knife. So if you if you want to do turned potatoes. Uh, that is a giant pain uh, to do, but it is also kind of fun, and they look really neat. Uh, so that that's a fun thing to do, and also a smaller blade. So that is more something I use for, for creating interesting garnish. Okay, then we have 
the actual bag so you have this this is a leather flap I'll probably have to turn this over um, you have three slots for business cards which I, I would not put in here I'm not a professional chef so that, that, that I would not carry that in this as I said the four pen loops and then here is another nice slot uh, just to uh, have some, uh, some some space for something bigger I was actually hoping my cooking ruler could fit in there this is a this was a gift from Jamie as a friend she's a, she was trying to be a chef and she had two of these she gave me one this is lovely uh, it gives the, the diameters of all your cuts um, and so if, if you're interested in cooking this is a very nice thing to have and I actually use this quite a bit and um, not so much for the cuts but I use this for dough if it says something like roll out to be three quarters of an inch thick I'm on the, in the North American continent now, I did not grow up with inches, so I do not necessarily have a mental image of what three quarters of an inch looks like, but this does. So you can easily measure something, which is actually quite nice. Unfortunately, uh, this just does not fit in there, so I have to put that in separately. One thing I may put in here, so I just hit the, uh, the tripod. I'm sitting on my knees on the ground, this is what I do for you people, right? I mean, this is how much I love you. So what I can put in there, what I will put in there, is something that actually belongs to Aziza, which is this. Uh, I got her this, along with a little knife I'll show you in a second, uh, made by Opina in uh, France. Um, this tiny little thing is a finger guard. Okay, This was actually a, a, a chef's knife for children's set, um, but um, this is very nice. So we all know that if you cut properly, right, you put your hand down, claw, and then you, you cut and you guide the knife with your knuckle. For some people that's a bit scary. Uh, and you definitely don't want to cut like this because if you hold something like this and you cut like this at some point you're gonna hit your finger that's just a given so this cute little thing you put your fingers in and then you can cut right I'm doing a terrible cutting motion now because I'm using my hand not a knife but I mean you could you could cut like this use that as a finger guard now this is something even though it's cute I would never make fun of this right I mean for some people knives are sharp objects and some people just don't really like that they find it creepy or scary or whatever something like this is a great tool to help you develop proper cutting and to make sure you don't get hurt because this is very hard plastic you will not cut through this that's for sure so this is going to go in there so that Aziza has something and I'm going to flip this around because that's how the flap opens up so that's a heavy duty piece of leather up there and then we have a second flap here now again, a lot of professional quote unquote uh, edge guards. Have to do something about that before I go probably. But in any case, what do we have here? A lot of knives, uh, more than you would really traditionally need. I just I just like knives. Okay, I once saw a little um, feature on uh, an Iron Chef Morimoto, and he said my knives are my friends. Well, that's I, I kind of understand what he means, and I think a lot of us understand what he means. This is one of my favorite knives. Um, I'll show you the actual knife. It's a 10 inch Kaishun uh, knife. Has that nice sort of the, the, the Damascus they do and all that. But not only is it pretty, I just love this knife. A more Japanese shape, more like a Gyuto, right? With the, with the sort of the sheep's foot uh, tip there. And not a whole lot of belly. There is a little bit there, but not a whole lot. Uh, beautiful. This is the um, uh, Kai. Fuji series, which I think may be exclusive to William Sonoma. I'm not sure, but in any case, it's it's. Uh, I, I got it there. Actually, Aziza got it there for me as a Christmas present. It's it's an absolutely beautiful knife. I also love this this pommel. It actually is. Um, sorry, it's very reflective, of course, but it's Damascus steel, um, and very very comfortable. Can be used by left and right handers too, by the way. So that's that's kind of nice because of the shape of the uh, the, the grip. Very nice, a nice knife, and I, 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 I love this one. Perfect shape and size for me. So this gets a lot of use. Let me just carefully put that back. Next one in here. This is my global filleting knife. It's a bit uh, springy, right, as it's supposed to be. G19 model, should you be interested. Uh, I'm pretty sure this was the 10 inch uh, uh, blade length. Um, a bit flexible, filleting fish etc is, is useful. I um, I have to admit I don't do a whole lot of filleting fish but uh, I do use this a lot if uh, I have to cut off the, uh, the skin of fish, uh, salmon etc. So that's always an option. 
Okay, then here we have something that's a bit more special. Um, this is a Yanagiba, so this um, often referred to as the sashimi knife. Um, I use it as a general slicer, I also uh, slice cooked meat with it, for example, because I don't make a whole lot of sashimi. Um, another global G14, 10 inch uh, um, uh, Yanagiba. What's very nice about this one is this mirror polish. You can see the, uh, the the camera right there. You may even be able to see me. Oh yeah, that's me, isn't it? Anyway, um, that that this knife does not come with that mirror finish. My my friend Aaron, who is a um, an absolute maestro when it comes to knife sharpening and polishing, uh, put a very good edge on this knife for me, and he did that mirror edge, which just makes it all the more beautiful. A superb knife uh, that I I really like and that I. Uh, I definitely look forward to uh, slicing something up with that again. Okay, now as this is this one comes up, you see there is the 17 slots. Or what, what is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 there, 14, 15, 16, 17, I guess. I don't know exactly how they counted the 17, but there were slots up here as well, which is kind of neat. In here is a slightly odd knife, GS1, Global makes this. A smaller knife, I think they refer to it as a vegetable knife. Um, I like this if you need a slightly bigger paring knife. Uh, it's, uh, I've, I've, it's, I've used it for peeling, that, that works well. Um, I've also used this for uh, because it has a belly. It's very nice for, for chopping herbs or something. Notice how I said herbs and not herbs. Okay, we've had that. What else have we got? This is a special knife. Um, the, um, uh, it's a, a global knife. G17. Uh, this is a 10 inch global chef's knife. Uh, I like 10 inch chef's knives. I always think it's, it's a good idea to, to use the, the, the biggest knife you're comfortable with. So that, that doesn't uh, need to be an 8 inch knife. For some people that's a 6 inch knife. I like a 10 inch knife. I find that a very comfortable size to work with. I once bought a global 12 inch knife which is a lot of fun to use but that is definitely getting very big for me. Um, but that's great for big watermelons, etc. For everyday use, I have this knife. This knife is special to me because it was the first really nice kitchen knife I bought. And yes, I know it's not a Japanese custom knife. There is way nicer kitchen knives than, than Global. But I really like Global. It's a brand that, I, uh, that, that has meaning to me because, as I said, it was my first actual uh, nice kitchen knife. So in that regard, it's, uh, it's, it's a special one for me. Okay, so there's that. The next one. This is my 10 inch global slicer. It's, it's just a carving knife. Uh, simple, it's not flexible. Uh, model, should you desire it, is G47. Um, I, I love this. This is great for roasts. Uh, I, I use this to, to tranche uh, steaks. Um, that kind of stuff works really, really nicely and is a, is a lovely overall knife. I, I also like that it's, it's 10 inches. That's just a good size. If you have a slightly bigger roast, it's easier to, to cut through. Okay, here we have a knife, it's actually Aziza's. Aziza has a chef knife too. It's a, a six inch Rusthof, uh, and that's that's perfect. Perfect size for her. Rusthof knives, classic German knives, uh, very nice. Six inches, that's something she's comfortable with. Okay, insert joke there. Um, in any case, um, she she loves that, that knife, so we had to take that for her, of course. Okay, then we have this one. This is another lovely knife. Um, my uh, this was uh, actually there was a Christmas present from Aziza as well, 2016. Um, another Kai Shun, 10 inch knife. Uh, this is the Shun Classic, uh, which is uh, very nice. I like using it. The advantage of the other 10 inch Shun I showed you, the the Fuji, is a couple of things. This is more rounded off, so when you put your finger there, should you want to do that, I typically use a pinch grip. I use the knife like this, this is rounded up and your finger sli slips in very nicely there. Whereas with this knife, the classic, it's pretty much a 90 degree angle. So you will feel that a little more, it's a bit sharper. And the spine of the blade, 90 degree angle. So if you cut with this for a long time in pinch grip, you're going to feel it. Whereas with this one, the spine is rounded off. You can hold this in pinch grip. Um, I have cut with this for long periods of time, for example when I did 
more extensive um, uh, stir fries. We had a lot of vegetables all to dice up. Use it for a long time, you have no issues. Whereas with this one, you, you feel it a little bit. It's, uh, it's just the way it is. Okay, put that out of the way. Next. This was a Christmas gift from Eric in 2016. Uh, Rusthof Boning Knife. I think this is their uh, Icon, yes, Icon series. Very nice. Boning, not filleting. It's not uh, really flexible. Um, but good for boning and I, I love this quick quick uh, if you need to uh, uh, debone some sort of meat uh, this this works very well very nice came out of the box very sharply etc here's a birthday gift from Aaron I absolutely love this Aaron of course I cherish all the knives you've given me I've left some here just because I don't want to carry all of them uh, where I'm going Nakiri a Japanese vegetable knife very nice. Uh, this is a 90 degree angle, but this is nicely rounded up. Um, this is something you use not in a, in a rocking motion, but more in a, in a like you, you, you pull back. Uh, made for vegetables, lovely knife. Um, uh, came out of the box, very, very nice, very, very sharp. And it's uh, absolutely a, a, a joy to use. It was actually wrapped in a Japanese newspaper, which I on the, left on there because that's just too much fun. Okay. Now we have this crucial knife, simple but crucial, uh, the Global G9, very simple, serrated edge knife, aka the bread knife. You need a serrated edge knife. You need something to be able to cut uh, bread or, or softer products that you, you don't want to squash. Uh, some people uh, use this for tomatoes, that works fine. I, I personally don't, but I mean that there is something to be said for that because the skin can be a bit tough. Um, so it's it, it all makes sense. And we have this here, this is another crucial bit of kit, right, the, 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 the meat fork. I like meat forks that have long prongs like this, um, just because you can do other stuff with it as well. For example, if you have spaghetti, you can just sort of roll it up, put it on the plate, it looks nicer. Um, this is a very simple, humble, William Sonoma, uh, I think it was their, their house brand, um, it's made in China, but this is just a fork, right, I, I, I don't need any super fancy meat fork. Uh, this came with a with a carving uh, knife as well, same uh, um, handle. It's some sort of wood. I don't even know what wood it is. That knife is okay, but I I prefer my uh, my global slicing knife for sure. Okay, let's see what we have in here. Coming to the end of all this, uh, this I think is yeah. That's the uh, that's a cheese knife, right? So it's it's made in such a way it's um, it has these these little uh, grooves on the edge and it has a scalloped edge. Uh, and it has these holes so the cheese you cut won't stick to it. Uh, I will say it's a pain to clean because bits accumulate there and, and your sponge will not really go through. So it's a bit of a pain, but when it comes to cheese or other products, I have done some tomatoes with this if I absolutely have to. I've done small buns with this. You, you can cut all that stuff with it. It's, it's, it's a lovely knife and a pretty aggressive uh, point there too, which I think you also use for something with cheese and I forgot what you use that for because I don't eat cheese. Okay. Here we have this knife. This is a knife, another global, that I absolutely love. Uh, it's a universal knife. Some people call that a petty knife. GSF 24. Another one of the forged global knives. Six inch blade. Uh, why would you use this? Well, if you if your chef's knife is too big, but your paring knife is too small, then you use this. And I love it. It's almost dagger shaped, right? You could use it as a sort of oversized steak knife too, if you want. But a uh, nice, simple knife. And because it's forged, it definitely has some, some uh, weight to it more so than the regular uh, global blades uh, and very nicely I find it very nicely um, uh, uh, balanced so that that is quite cool and definitely a knife that I, I use a lot so when I when I start cooking <coughs> I put out my knives I have a chef's knife I have a paring knife and I always have that one for just the, the, the weirdo jobs that you can't do with anything else okay now we have a Zizas knife it is an opinal uh, Chef Junior or something, I think it's called. In any case, small knife, doesn't have a sharp tip, so your kid doesn't stab itself or your wife. Um, has a little uh, rivet for your finger, you can put your finger in. And I say again, I, I don't make fun of people for using this. Knives are scary, and if you're, I mean, Ziza is also a bit smaller than I am, uh, so for her, this is basically the size of her underarm, right? What do you call that in English? Lower arm. Um, 
so I can see that this is is, is threatening for, for some people. And if you're comfortable with this, then use this. This will cut a tomato. I've sharpened it. We'll, we'll, cut, we'll cut a tomato. We'll do what you, what you need it to do. And in combination with the cute little finger guard, you know, she's sort of chopping away happily. That was a terrible cutting motion. I'm reaching around a tripod, okay? So anyway, that's her knife. That's coming with us too. And I have one more thing in here, I believe. It's a sort of cleaver. I say sort of cleaver because it's. I'm pretty sure this is a Chinese vegetable knife. Uh, it's not particularly thick, but it does actually have some thickness to it. It's, it's pretty rigid. Now, the chai dao in China is used as a chef's knife. I have a Chinese chai dao as well. I have not brought it, but it is a lovely knife. They Chinese chefs use that for everything, so they don't play our game. They don't do uh, pairing knives and all that stuff. They just use one knife, which is a very, very sensible approach because why have 17 knives when you can have one? I do love using Chinese chef's knives, but I use this as a cleaver. This is from a Chinese supermarket. I think this was 750. It's I've been hacking away with this. I, I when I bake with chocolate, I chop up the chocolate with this. It takes a beating. The edge is still going even though I've I've cut through some pretty hard stuff with it. If this ever goes, I'll throw it out. I'll buy a new one because it's 750 as opposed to buying a a uh, higher-end cleaver from Sevushoff, which would set you back considerably more, and would probably also last you longer. So, as always, the discussion is: is the cheapness worth it? For me, it is because I don't do a lot of cleaving. I'm not a butcher. I don't. I don't break down bones and and cut through bones of animals. This serves my purpose perfectly fine. And there you have it. This is the knife setup. So, my cute knife bag. I love it. I think this is a superb product. I, I mean, I've I've. This makes me happy. It smells of leather. It's it's lovely. It it folds up to a fairly compact thing. It has a beautiful uh, uh, shoulder strap. It has brass buckles. I mean, it, it I, I I love it. So that's it. This was the overview of the knives. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, let me know. There's not going to be any cutting demonstrations. I'm just showing you the the contents of the bag, and that's all there's to it. Hope this was useful, and um, I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye.